I walked out the closet and the Lord was like, go back in there. And I want you to take that basket and I want you to pour everything out. And I want you to throw away what needs to be thrown away and keep what needs to be kept. I'm just like, why? Well, what's all? I was like, that's going to take a whole lot of time. That's going to be messy. I hope there's no crumbs in there. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to do that. And he was like, because the way that you clean your closet is the way that you handle your life. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Everything that you've been praying for. You've heard love. You're going to heal. Come back strong. I know what you got. God got you. Your girls, we're here. We're with you. This is your battle. Oh, I know you're about to come back battle. God, don't miss. You're all in. This is it. Come back, sales. I know the whole world told you. Come back, come back, sales. You are in enough, but you are. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was saying a second ago, you look exactly like Instagram. <laughs> That's good. Hopefully. That's good, right? All right, hopefully. Because <laughs> you know, you see people on Instagram, you're like, they cannot possibly be that cool in real life. But your um, aura comes off the Instagram. Oh, that means a lot. That means same for you. Thank you. You came in, it's just like, ah, <laughs> uh, that's, like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You have a wife and five kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been married for 15 years. We've been together for 18 years. Wow. Long time. People think I'm old because of that. <laughs> they think you're old because you're wise. And wisdom is infinite. There's no age. Thank you. You started spitting already. <laughs> you started spitting already. I just want to commend you. Like I said, I've known you, of course. You know, I've known your music. But I just recently started following you, like, in the past couple of years. And I've just been blown away. I've told you, Thank you that I'm just blown away at the way God just downloads into you. Wow. You, you got something special for sure. Okay. I'm going to tell you this because tell me when I'm tripping. All right. You're a man. Yeah. And you have actual masculine energy. And you've planted seeds yeah. and children have grown. Mm. So when you say, I see the God in you, it resonates. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I didn't know my opinion mattered that much, but I'm telling you, like, can I bring up what was something that just stuck in my head from sure. what you said? Sure. You made a post, and this is the post that I just will never forget. You made a post about the things, the list that you would make for the things that you would want in a man. Mm -hmm. And when I was just ready to hear like everything that I've always heard, because women always do this and their lists kind of sound the same, but yours was quite different. I can't remember everything that you said, mm -hmm. but you were speaking like, I, I want him to be uh, satisfied and settled in the things that he does and his purpose. I want him to have a strong community. I want him to believe in what he does. I was just like, you said everything that serves this man and builds him up to be everything that God is calling him to be. But usually when people make those lists, they're always self-serving. It's like, I want a man to take care of me, look at me, and I want him to see stars. I want like all of that stuff. I'm just like, what made you what what makes you the type of person that has a list like that? Like, that's crazy to How me. a man treats people is how he treats people. How you treat people is how you treat people. Mm. Don't ask me how you treat a woman. How do you treat birds? I, I feel the same. How you I treat feel, your car? I feel the same. Because it's a delusion to think, like, when you're in the... I always say that, man. Watch and observe a person outside of romance mode between y'all two. See, it, see how he moves with his family members. <sighs> That's what got me about my wife. I was just like, man, her brother called and was like, I'm hungry and I'm at work and I didn't bring any money. She was like, she went in the kitchen start. I was like, what are you doing? She was like, I'm about to make him a sandwich. I was like, he, he works in another city. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, but my brother's hungry. I was like. That's the one. That's it. Because if she, you know, because siblings, we like, we love each other, but it's like, don't get your own sandwich. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that she was willing to be selfless and love him like that, I was like, I'm not going to have no problems. Wow. So in the same way, I think looking at a whole person and how they move in every dynamic makes sense. So I, I think when you said what you said, enlighten me, because I'm just like, wouldn't it be so amazing if we all prayed that type of list for the people that we're prepared for? Like, I want you to be whole. What does it mean to pray for a list? 
oftentimes where we people tell us, you know, pray, you know, pray that you get married. And so some people think one-sidedly or one-dimensionally and like, God, I want you to make me this and I want you to give me that. But no one ever considers that that individual that may be in relationship with them has their own journey. They have their own uh, background. They have their own struggles. They have their own successes. And all of those things will play into affecting you. But more importantly, that individual deserves to be whole. Mm -hmm. The same way you deserve to be whole, you deserve to, uh, to walk in purpose, that individual deserves that. And I think being able to recognize that selflessly, mm -hmm. that's amazing. So praying that prayer just says, God, I care about the soul of the of the people I'm relation in relationship with. Mm -hmm. That means a lot for every I care pastor. about the soul of the person <laughs> that I'm, I'm in a relationship, relationship with. with. I care about the soul. Care about their soul. Okay, this this is I have one thing I want to ask you today. Just one thing. Go ahead. My one deal breaker mm -hmm. is that you love me. Wait, that's the one deal breaker. Because that's God's only deal breaker. Whew. But the barometer for love is the Holy Spirit. Wow. Come on. So the deal breakers are the Holy Spirit are patience, mm. peace, mm. kindness. Gentleness. So if you're telling me that as a man, you can't be gentle, wow. that's a deal breaker. Yeah. You feel me? Yes. Yes. How do you reconcile with the fact that you have to be, have the Holy Spirit as a deal breaker? Man. Like, honestly, because if it's relation, it's a relationship thing. It's a relationship thing. And I always say, it's not personal. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not even personal. That's good. Like, like this is a relationship thing. Mm. Like I have a relationship with my father. Mm. So you doing your thing, that's, that's cool. Do your thing. But if you're not in relationship with my father, we don't have community. There's no unity. There's no harmony. Like the chords is off. The I'm key leaving. is wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm leaving. Because how do you say that to somebody? Mm. Can you tell us how to say that? What does that look like in real life? I'm not a person that wants to point a finger and look at someone where they where they fall and kick them where they're down. Got it. But I would say, I would speak it as a, a, a way of encouragement that there is so much of you to become. Like there is so much for you on the other side of obedience. There's so much for you on the other side of knowing who you are in him. So I would do you a disservice by making you think that you could be complacent here, tying you with me while I elevate, while you stay stagnant. I love you that much. I love you that much. And just like you were saying, I want to see you whole. And I realize that there are some things that you're not hearing. I know that there's things that you're not seeing about yourselves and the self and even the way you see the people around you that I dare you to walk in in a way that makes yourself available for him to use you, to speak to you, to know you and for you to know him. And I think that's a that's an intimate and it's a deep conversation. Everybody's not willing and ready to have because everybody is just, we're so surface in this day and age. We just want to deal with the surface. But when, when it matters is when things get hard, mm -hmm. when someone goes through issues, pains, when you're not being served and you're not being, you're not being fulfilled. Like when that person is going through their trial, how do you respond to their weakest moments? Like that's like really important. And, and what's exposed is what's I'm really sorry. on the inside. When that person is going through their, their trauma, yeah. how do you respond in their weakest moments? Yeah. Is that love? Man, you know what happens to us? This is so crazy, men and women. Because we're not sensitive to the spirit and we don't have any insight, we get offended when people are broken. Oh my God. Like what the Holy Spirit does is not only incubates, comforts, protects you, but it also gives you another level of insight that mm -hmm. allows me to be sensitive, allows me to know how to move and navigate because I know I'm 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 whole, so I look from whole lenses. And when I look out, I see whole people. So when I see someone that is broken or operating lesser than themselves, it's very clear to me. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Hold on now. Wait a second. Because <laughs> now you're at Ephesians 4. Oh, so don't do this to me. <laughs> because what you're talking about is your gift. Mm. Am I right? Teach me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you talking about a prophetic gifting? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it's, prof it's prophetic, mm -hmm. but it's also because my nature is changing. 
my nature is changing day by day, and I no longer see from basic lenses. When I see people move and operate the way they move and operate, the scripture tells us um, in Ephesians 6, we were both in Ephesians, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, right. And so when I see people moving carnally, when I see people moving in certain ways, I'm like, oh, that's what that is. I know that's that's the spirit. So you're talking about I, discernment. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. It's a By the way, James discernment. Gall, Discernment, that book, if you're looking for discernment, you go find it over there oh by James gosh. Gall. Well, okay. Because, okay. So help me because I'm, I'm just saved. I just got, you know, I'm just figuring out this Holy Spirit walk mm-hmm. and people are telling me I got all of these gifts, but I don't know if my dog is choking when he coughs. I can't tell if the water's on and I just turned the faucet up. <laughs> I don't know if the light's on. I just flipped the switch. Oh, yeah. My discernment is off. Mm. What does it mean to have discernment when I look at people? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it's about always knowing everything about everyone at mm-hmm. all times. Uh, the scripture shows us that, you know, when the people, uh, people of God were ex- had their exodus out of Egypt, he gave them, fe- he fed them with manna. Every day. Every day. There was a purpose for that, right? Mm-hmm. Because he, if he gave them all of the bread at one time, it would have crushed them. Under the pressure of the abundance of bread, it would have crushed them. And if they would have had it, um, just stored up bread, it would have went bad before they got a chance to eat it. So what did he do? He fed them daily. Yeah. So they would have to depend on him daily. There's something that God desires from us, which is the dynamic of communion daily. And so what it looks like to have discernment, is just looks like leaning on him. Mm-hmm. It looks like seeking him. And so we don't have discernment just independent. We're, we're not like, we're not witches. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people that operate and they can operate, you know, you know, this is my power. No, I'm tapped into the source. Mm-hmm. What you're getting is what I'm getting. Got it. I'm, I'm tapped in, so I give you what I get. So it looks like a constant leaning in. Like, God, if you don't want to show me this, I'm still on a journey with you. Got it. God, if I'm uncertain here, I'm still leaning on you. But God, when you show me, I know that you've given me these eyes. You've given me this insight. You've allowed me to hear this. You've allowed me to see this. And you'll find yourself in situations where you might be the only one that's seeing something because you're tapped in. And the the more you're tapped in, the more you're able to recognize his voice and see with his eyes, the more you feel like it feels like you're alone. It feels like you're the only one. You feel weird. You feel strange. But the comfort comes in knowing that this is community here. And so when you welcome someone into that space, they have to be tapped in. Otherwise, you can be in relationship with someone and still be out of community and still feel alone. Yeah. I got yeah. really brave on Instagram. Okay. what you do? And I said, I have a feeling that there's about to be tours Mm -hmm. of God's people, kingdom men and women, Mm -hmm. who are going to have something to say. And I said, there's not going to be no music. And you announced your tour. I didn't even see that post. You announced your tour. And I said, oh, my God, was I supposed to just tell him? Oh, my God. Yeah. You could have said that. (laughs) I didn't know. Listen, it's so prophetic. We just went to South Africa. And South Africa, they have this issue where a lot of the men are abusing. This domestic violence is a big issue. Gender-based violence is a big issue out there. And we went out there just in just warfare ready mode. Mm. It turned. It started off as just having conversations in relationship. Then someone stood up and said, "Man, nobody's talking about the fact that seventy-five percent of the men in this country were sexually abused." before the age of 18. Mm. And we wonder why they're crying out with their fists. And now, while you could have, if without discernment, you'll go in trying to fight the, a demon the wrong way. Talk to us. Help us. Trying to fight a demon the wrong way. All right, we, we got to deal with it. We got to, you know, aggressively put these men in a headlock, not knowing that these broken men mm-hmm. are breaking people. Whew. And so who is going to tap into the Holy Spirit in a way that knows how to embrace that man, look him in the eye and tell him his value and his worth? Because he's walking in that lie, he uses his body in ways that he should not. He speaks with his mouth in ways that he should not. And so it turned into, I was like, we're about to break this generational curse. Mm -hmm. We're about to deal with this at the head and deal with this spirit and deal with these issues and pray that the Lord... Man, we invited the presence of the Lord and it was no music, just conversations. And to this day, they're still talking. There's testimonies coming forth. So I'm just like, 
God, whatever you plan to do. And you know, we've been doing poetry. We've been doing music for all this time. And God's just like, this is the lane I want you to be be in. And then wow. I saw, I saw you start. You're like, look, we're about to we're about to come together. And here you did the circle, the soft life soft circle, life but circle. but it was that message wasn't to me. Uh huh. And so I was like, because okay, when you're an R and B singer, yeah, 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 nobody expects you to have any connection, and so, so you don't really know how to display it properly. Yeah. Yeah. And so how you said sometimes, like, you just want to go in to be yeah. like, nah, the Lord is saying yeah, this. Yeah, 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 and it's yeah, like, yeah. but ma'am, you saying Aston Martin music, like, yeah. you're not allowed over here. Yeah. So when I went on Instagram, you're going to make me tear up. Yeah. But when I went on Instagram and said what I said, your, your post announcing is, can we talk, right? Yeah. Your we need post, to talk. Yeah. we need to talk. Yeah. It confirmed what I said. I said, oh, that's what I saw. Wow. And then a couple of other people started talking about they were doing these speaking tours and, wow. and people would DM me or, or, or comment underneath that post. Oh, that's confirmation. But when I saw that's yours, I was like, that's what the Lord is doing. And I kept saying, is it me, Lord? Man. You know, because sometimes when you hear, you're yeah. like, is it for me? I just was we just had this conversation about giftings yesterday. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like we get kind of timid when it comes when the Lord is speaking through us or compelling us to say something or do something because we honor the Lord so much. We don't want to get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Lord, I don't want to lie to your people. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to tell them something and it really just be something in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure when I'm speaking, it's your voice because I don't play with your voice, right? And so I, I was talking to one of my friends and he spoke to me and he said, "Man." When the Lord tells you to do something or to say something, say it and do it. Everything else is not your business. How people receive it, how people respond to it, whether they affirm that this is right or this is wrong. And I was like, he was like, you being wrong is not even your business. Mm-hmm. Say what God told you to say. I'm just like, that's so scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because it's going to cause you and put you in a position where you got to trust God yeah. and let him do the speaking. So we, I think while we're, we get afraid is because we think that we have a lot to do with it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We think we have more to do with it than we do. <laughs> yeah. And so you might say, I see a season of marriage. He, you might not be the one getting married. <laughs> That's some of the craziest thing. You don't, you don't see no signs. Mm-hmm. You like, it's, it's dry. It's a desert yeah, everywhere. Yeah, all your friends come back. Y'all just got engaged on Thursday. <laughs> My pastor made an announcement, you know, as, as a prophecy. Mm-hmm. And he said, this, I'm going to be performing a lot of weddings this year. So I'm getting my dress together, checking out my whites. Wow. Next thing I know, all my friends are like, of course, I just got engaged. And here I am interceding for marriage and, you know, making sure that I'm paying attention. Mm-hmm. And one friend after the next, I just got engaged. And I said, okay, that's what. Or, or a prophecy about everybody's going to be getting a house in this particular order. It's Mm. I'm watching everybody buy a house and I don't buy one. Mm. Sometimes you just call to intercede for people. Yeah. People don't realize that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How do you teach your children about spirituality? So six figures in a day. Yes, it's here, right? Now, this is a real live screenshot that I personally did in my account. Now, I do this live with my people. My people meaning in my Discord that I have. And guess what? I'm not the only one making this type of money. As you see, there are people making two, three, four, five hundred percent with me, right? And what I want you to know is that this is not something that is foreign. It can be done and replicated, not just by me or a couple of people who know what I know. I can teach it to you. So you want to learn what we know? You want to do what we do? I do this live. So I can't even fake it. I do it live every day that the market is open. Come join me. I got you. Man, I mean... I, I think if we try to separate the spirituality, well, if you don't know, I'm Nigerian. So mm-hmm. Africans just, by nature, we're just spiritual people. We're more inclined to spiritual things. So I think the one thing that I did learn from my family is I don't think we have to make such a big dichotomy between the spiritual and between the natural. Yes, they're separate, but they influence each other greatly. And so my kids, man, they know, like when they see, they, they, they'll come back and tell, tell us a story about, so I told this boy that, you know, I, I went to church and I love God and he got mad at me. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's, that's possible. I was like, recognize who you are and what's in you. It's going to agitate demons around, <laughs> the, the demons and others. And so recognize that your job is not to, to run away, but your job is to pray. For the people that are around you. So I, I, I keep 
keep things, conversations like that at the forefront and don't just leave it to the, the Sunday school teacher. I don't just leave it to bedtime when we have to pray. But in our daily conversations, we're having conversations that have to do with, hey, daddy, why am I not taller? Then we begin to introduce, hey, look, God made you exactly who you are, and he designed you the way that you are for his glory. Mm -hmm. And when you look at yourself, you need to affirm what he did and tell him you did a good job. Yeah. And so that's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Him, Us honoring who he made us to be is us honoring him. It's us admiring the art of the one who created the masterpiece. Honor and stewardship, they go hand in hand. When God tells us to honor honor him, sometimes that looks like honoring yourself. Sometimes that looks like honoring yourself. I gave this illustration on my on my IG one time. One time I was uh, cleaning my closet, right? And while I was cleaning my closet, I was trying to, you know, get it done fast. And, you know, I was clearing out things, you know, moving things, organized. I had my shoes right. You know, I had my, you know, everything hung up right. But there's this little basket I have in my closet where I put my receipts and everything that was in my pocket for the day. And I, I just keep that container in my closet. And I kind of just put pushed it to the back, you know what I mean? And I just, I took out a couple things and I walked out the closet and the Lord was like, go back in there. And I want you to take that basket and I want you to pour everything out. And I want you to throw away what needs to be thrown away and keep what needs to be kept. I'm just like, why? What, what's all? I was like, that's going to take a whole lot of time. That's going to be messy. I hope there's no crumbs in there. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to do that. And he was like, because the way that you clean your closet is the way that you handle your life. He said, you're more comfortable with preparing your life in a way that it could look good from the outside, but you don't respect your enough, yourself enough that your, your closet is clean to you. Like, it's okay for your closet to be clean enough for people to peek, peek in and just take a glimpse of. But you know, you know that basket has junk in there that doesn't belong in there. But because people don't see it, you're okay with it being there. And he said, pour it out and deal with everything accordingly. And in my mind, while I was thinking about it, it takes time, it's messy. And he's like, exactly. You, you, you avoid the mess. You avoid the time and the work that it takes to actually see things for what they really, really are and deal with those things and face the issues that you really have. But that's what's necessary for the next level of sanctification because I'm growing you and I will not allow you to be comfortable while there's still mess that you have that only you can see. So as God grows you, you'll realize and see like, there are things that you did 10 years ago while still loving God that now you just don't feel comfortable doing. God don't give you peace with doing or saying or being around certain people that everything was cool. You still kind of had some giftings. You were still flowing and all of that stuff. But God was just like, now this is another level of sanctification. So there was some stuff, stuff that I allowed you to do last year. This year, it's a different level of discipline, different level of expectations, because it's another level of growth. It's another level of intimacy. So, yeah. What was inside of that box mm -hmm. that reminded you of something that you thought you couldn't come back from? Oh, that's a good question. Man, you got too deep for me. I'm sorry. Well, the name of the podcast is Comeback Sis, Ooh. right? And it's the name of the book I'm putting out. And sometimes I find that if you don't think you can figure something out, mm. you just decide to put it in a box of receipts. Receipts is such a key word there because I already got paid for it. Dang, but it's in good. my box so I can show it to my accountant later. Come on. Right, so Come he can on. look at it for yeah. me. Oh, wow. But God is asking me to look at my receipts. Wow. Man, that's so good. Because I think we get comfortable with, you know, like you said, pushing it to the back. And when God tells you to confront, you said, what are some things that I did not think that I could come back from? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's less about thinking that I could come back from, but I think it was more about me not really truly believing that I was who God said I was, mm -hmm. not truly believing that I could be used to the level that he wanted to use me because I felt, you know, after, you know, you live for the Lord and you make mistakes, you feel like God puts another cap on where he can take you and okay. where he chose you. And so I'm just like, God, I know that you love me. I know that you forgive me, 
But I haven't accepted that when the Lord calls me righteous, calls me his own, says he loves me. I don't believe that you love me the same because nobody would love somebody the same after they showed and proven that they're not exactly who you know they wanted to be or they're not perfect. And God reveals something else to me about mm-hmm. the way that he washes us and the way he cleanses us. It's like, I don't wash like the world washes. You know, mm-hmm. when you wash, you you know, sometimes even using your hands, back to antibacterial soap, it washes what, 99.9%. <laughs> and you, you, you have, I'm from the era where we used to wear the white tees, the long mm-hmm. white tees back in the day. And I didn't wear the same white tee twice because after you washed it, it just didn't look like it looked. It's not crispy. Getting, it's, not, it's not crispy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I know you wash me. But I know when we wash in the world, after it's washed, it's just, it's just not the same. And he was like, I don't wash like the world washes. When I wash, I wash to make new. Mm. So when I call you my son, when I call you righteous, when I say I'm going to use you, I don't look at you through the lenses of your failures. I don't look at you through the lenses of your sin and your shortcoming. I look at you the way I desire you and I created you to be. And I had to learn to accept like, to call myself a righteous man of God, like a man that stands stands in the presence of God as righteous and whole, I could not accept it. I could not truly believe that because I'm just like, all he did was wash me. But it's like, I made you new. I gave you different eyes and different lenses. I'm giving you a new mouth to speak different things, a new mind to think different thoughts. But it's something else that he told me was just because I give it, doesn't mean that they receive it. And there are so many things that the Lord has given, so many things the Lord has made available to us. But if we don't embrace it, consume ourselves with it and walk in it daily, then you will still be someone that the Lord has blessed but hasn't accessed their blessings. What's your cash app? No, no, no. What's your cash app? The Azan Woos. Azan Woos. The Azan Woos. If you just got blessed. I'm not playing with y'all. Oh, I don't feel, I, I feel unworthy. Oh, come on. No, 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 I'm serious. You, What you're telling me today is that God doesn't, re, re, doesn't he doesn't forget what he saw. Mm. You might forget what he saw. That's so, that's, that blessed me. I haven't changed my mind about you. That's what he's saying. I have not changed my mind about you. The plans that I had for you, I still have. Mm, you're making me want to cry. Like, you, that, that's why I said get to the cash app because this is this is this is going to change somebody's life. Oh, because I'll be honest, when the world told me mm. what they saw of me, mm. I had to keep reminding myself, and that's mm. not good when you have to remind. I had to remind Don't say it's not myself. Good. That's that is good. It is good because by nature, the attacks that come at you by default mm-hmm. is to challenge mm-hmm. what God has said. When, when Jesus came out of, uh, out of the wilderness of fasting and praying, that Satan said, um, if you are the son of God. Mm-hmm. So everything that you endure and face, everything you go through is questioning who you are. That's, keep going. that's, that's the plan. Yeah. But that's the, the other plan. Yeah. Exactly. It's to get you to forget so that you can forfeit. Come on. Oh. Wow. Is this in your book? Or you? That that's <laughs> Look, that's off the top. Man. That's your fault. That- that's it. And it's, I love what you said because honestly, we, we I do a lot of I speaking to men. Mm-hmm. And so many men have been broken at young ages. And they grow up, you know, age-wise, they grow up. But there are elements of them that is just the, the boy in them that is still crying out, that does not know who he is, that cannot access the fullness of who he is. And the, the beautiful part about it is when God sees a man, he sees the man in his purest form. Mm. Um, and so that's why he tells us like children to come unto him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he calls the purest form of us. And it's, it's, it's even as a child. So even discipleship in and of itself, we talk about discipleship and maturing in Christ. What does that really look like? It looks like regressing to a child state with such a pure mind and a pure heart that is able, you cannot have faith in God without being like a child. To trust that God is more powerful than your emotions, to trust that he can carry you through situations that break people and lead people to depression and suicide, to hold on to God. No one one believes me when I say that. I have a really hard time conveying 
Chrisette, why didn't you break? Mm. I don't get to, like, that's not one of my things. I understand what you mean by that, but this is not me holding myself together. Come is on. that what you thought? Come on. You thought, I, oh, Chrisette, we got this. No, I don't have this. My faith has this because I'm. that's all I can walk by. I can't walk by anything I see. If I walked by what I saw, Listen to me. oh my Listen. God, I would have I would have quit. Crumble. And there were times where I had to tell somebody else what to see on my behalf and just say, pull me there, sis. Can you pull me there? Mm. I, and they, and I, they would say, Chrissy, it's right there. I say, sis, I can't see it. Wow. Tiara, how many times have I said this to you? Tiara, trust me, I can't see it. And she was like, Chrissy is right there. I cannot see it, Tiara. So if you can see it, hold my, pull me. Mm. And I would have to trust my accountability partner. And this is why, this we just, from the beginning of the conversation, she has to be in alignment. She got to be in alignment. Because, who? Imagine someone in such in such a place. You're 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 in the pit talking about pull me, and they're in a lower pit talking about what I mm-hmm. got you. Mm-hmm. And all you're doing is going further into a deeper deeper abyss. But she was. That's why community. Works so well because when you're low, she can pick you up. And when she's low, y'all can pick each other up because you guys have perspective. You guys are downloading your perspective, not from beneath, but from above. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's I call it the law of agreement. Mm. That's how I explain it to my sisters because God will send it down. But if y'all don't agree on it here, (laughs) then what's the use? You got a podcast that you're working out. Talk to me about it. Man, this podcast is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I've been wanting to get back to creating content for people that's valuable, that helps them in relationships and helps them see who they're supposed to be. Like, I feel like my passion, my mission on earth is just to bring clarity to what God is saying for individuals so they can see him better, so that they can see themselves better, so that they can see each other better. And I think we can do that in having conversations. This conversation right now is healing somebody. This conversation is deliverance for somebody. And I think like, as much as you could go and listen to a sermon, some people will be able to listen to this podcast and get everything that they need, confirmation and all that. And so that's, I want to create a platform that's consistent, that allows people to get that clarity that they need. And so I, I don't know if I'm going to have as as many features as I would love to have. I would love you to be on there. I'll be honored. All right. <laughs> I'd love you to be on there. But I really want people that are aligned, that that are speaking into people. I, I mean, there's a lot going on. There's so many relationship podcasts and different things like that. I really want to be a hub for healing for people. I want to be a hub for clarity for people. I want to see whole marriages out there. I want to see singles growing in the things of the Lord. It's just a lot of drama, a lot of mess. And that's not what I'm about. I'm just, I'm, I'm out here trying to see whole people. Beautiful. I'm yeah. so excited. What, what's the podcast going to be called? It's called We Need to Talk as Well. We Need to Talk as Well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. I'm so proud of you. You have a card deck for singles? Yes. 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 So I have a card, card, game card. Game card is called The Whole Truth Game Card. So people always date. People date like this. You know, they meet somebody and it's like, oh, you're cute. You're beautiful. Da, da, da. And that goes for like two weeks. And then when you stumble upon something, you stumble upon a conversation. And that would just be one topic. And then later on, you're engaged. And then you have things that pop up. I'm trying to avoid those pop-up situations and deal with some of those hard conversations on the front end. Why? Because it's important to build solid relationships that are based on friendship. If I can't rock with you as a friend, then we don't we can't go far as a unit as people that are supposed to be knitted together like that. So this gives people an opportunity to unveil their true selves in conversation. In this conversation right now, I was able to get so much depth from you. But how many times do we have conversations like this when we meet people? It's not often. And so this actually gives us an opportunity to ask people questions that matter like what's your relationship with your family? How do you handle this type of situation if this was to pop up? Are you good with kids? How do you feel? Okay. And you get to you get to hear from a man's perspective what he really feels, how he thinks without all the extra stuff. And if it if it turns out that this is not for you, 
you'll be able to see that even in the first conversation. Mm-hmm. So this is what that's, I, I'm excited about it. I get try to get those cards in everybody's hands. I've tried. I brought one for you, but then I left it at home. But I want you to take a look at it. It's a, it's a game that you could play with your friends, and it's really, really fun. And tell me the name of it one more it's time. It's called The Whole Truth Game Cards. The Whole Truth Game Cards. The reason mm-hmm. I like that so much is because of that childlike approachability that you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier. It's like come to this relationship even as a child without yeah. your bitterness. Without the wounds, just come as a child. Yes. Let's play a game. Yes. And see what happens. Yes. I love that. Yes, exactly. You yes. got it. You got it. I had so much fun talking to you today. We just, that's the tip of the iceberg. We could just, we could just go. I, I thought you was going to spit some bars, but it's okay. Let me, you want to spit for us? No, you, I, I said you. You. I want, can I g- give you a little challenge and I want to see if go you can it. do it? Go All right. It. So I teach spoken word class, right? Mm-hmm. And I have I teach something called parallels. And of course, if you're a poet, you already do it, but you don't know that you do it. And I teach this. So if you're not a poet, you could actually learn how to write creative lines by doing this. I'm nervous, so, just in case anybody's wondering. Uh, don't be nervous. You got this. You got this. So parables, of course, is, you know, parallel and para, they come from the same thing. Two things go in the same direction, but they're different. So with poetry, our job is to take deep things and compare them to simpler things so people can understand them. So you got ideas like love, you got ideas like sin, depression, regret. Those are deep concepts that you can't really color there. You have to kind of explain those things. And so Jesus, when he did his parables, he was like, well, the kingdom of God is like a farmer or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be, or a seed. And so this is how I teach people how to do parallels. So I want you to think about, well, let's, I'm, I'm going to use a word. Let's say peace. Mm-hmm. It's going to be peace. And I want you to just, just the first random, tangible words that come to your mind. So they have to be tangible, meaning they can't be words like hope. They can't be words like encouragement or anything like that. It has to be something like table or the sky. Edges, the edges of white clouds up against a blue sky. See, you're not supposed to be that good. No, I just felt See, that. that you're not supposed to be that I good. The cloud Most people right would just say you. something like water. Like, <laughs> goodness <I'm> gracious. <laughs> Chill out, yo. Okay. It was a cloud. Guys, you don't see this cloud. It was right behind his head. Said, that's so said, good. That's peace right there. <laughs> but that's it. So, yeah. And so when you you're 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 describing peace, mm-hmm. describe it like the cloud. So mm. give me the characteristics of the cloud. Everything, maybe where the cloud is, how the cloud feels, what it you know feels like against the skin, all of those things, what the cloud is made of, and then you describe peace without using the word peace. So mm-hmm. I'll let you. I'll let you begin. I want you to describe peace just with one line. You already. You already started. I was going to follow up on what you said. So what you got? You had the. Thank the you white for edges. this. Yeah, no problem. It's the white edge. It's up against the blue sky, just mm-hmm. above the street. Mm-hmm. It's. It can be heavy. But, when inside of it. It's so transparent. It causes you to feel uplifted, yet soaking in its presence at the same time. It's it's elevated, but not the type of elevation that causes you to look down on others, but the type that wants you to share it with everyone in its sky. Mm -hmm. I always wonder if it's hollow inside. I can only see it from my two eyes. Human eyes. Maybe the cloud is disguised. So far away, it's up in the sky. Can I have it? Cut. Oh, sweat. Cut. Yo, that was so cool. Cut. That was dope. That was really cool. That was dope. See, and you do that, and then you finally bring words like, and this is what. Okay, because I was wondering when we was going to say peace. Of course you bring it back in. So you you illustrate it. You use those words to illustrate it. Then you could bring peace back to say, your peace feels like, and then you could begin to go. And then this is what I feel living, living in your peace, living under your peace. And you could still use those same words to illustrate it. It's just helping you to pull out of the enigmatic, helping you pull out of the obscure and touch the tangible, which allows you to paint 
illustratively. Yeah. What an incredible lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I consider myself a lyricist, uh, but I know that sometimes I go too far. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. See, but that's why you got to help people. Yeah. See, if you stay there without saying peace, people be like, but what is, it feels good, but what is he talking about? That's yeah. why you got to hint them. Mm -hmm. I realize that with people, you just got to give them little hints every now and then. Yeah. So as you're sharing what you're sharing, I feel like it's hollow inside. Like, what? So wonder, in music, yeah. when you're a singer-songwriter type, yeah, yeah, yeah. your verse is the the part that's kind of abstract. Yes. Once you get to that chorus, we have to know exactly what it means so it's, that it's a universal concept. Absolutely. So what's your definition of it? How's it make you feel? Tell me what you'd say that really makes it real. Kings and queens, philosophers are fine. They're hard to find. But tell me what it means to you, dear, never mind. Love is kind when the world is cold. Love's first time we say it. See, that's, and then the co chorus is just love is you. Love is you, love is you. But I'd never realized that was what we were doing. Exactly. I didn't realize it. But that's you what a teacher is. A teacher uh, pulls concepts that people, they're like, how do you write songs? Yeah, that's how. That's so good. That was so good. Oh, thank thank you. you for that oh, treat. Course. This is amazing. Yes, yeah. this was awesome. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Praying for